and I'm here to tell you what to pack for a two week, three week, four week, month long trip to Sri Lanka. This island is jam packed with many things to do, even though it's a little bite sized island. There's waterfalls, there's hiking, there's surfing, snorkeling, temple exploration, and just chilling on beaches. There's even tuk tuk driving, if you're brave enough for that. Sri Lanka is a place that has a wet zone and a dry zone. So if you stay in the dry zones, then you're probably fine bringing only clothing for hot weather. However, if you are planning to go into the mountain area, Ella and Nuara Elia, where all the tea is grown, I would suggest bringing a couple clothing items for cooler weather. So I'm gonna talk about all of that in my packing list. This is in my 30 liter carry-on bag. I'm a digital nomad, so there's a lot more in this bag currently at the moment. But if I was only packing for a trip to Sri Lanka, this is what I would be bringing. First thing is, I have a fanny pack. If you're doing any kind of scooter riding or tuk-tuk driving, fanny pack is essential to always have your passport and your driver's license on your body as well as your wallet. So I think you can get away with any kind of fanny pack, a zipper one or something like this, which to me is a little bit more stylish. In my fanny pack, I have a pair of sunglasses. I have my wallet, which to me is just a really small coin purse because I just don't want to be carrying a lot of different things. I have my cards that I need in here and some cash and a couple coins. Reusable straw. We all want to do our part to help minimize plastic, so bring your own straws. It's those small little things that you can do that do make a difference. This is a fanoon or spoon fork knife. It's useful for buying groceries on the road or fruit on the road and you want to cut it up or eat some yogurt. Bringing your own cutlery piece, again, reduces on plastic. Chapstick with sunscreen. This is my Topo 30 liter backpack. It's a great size to fit under the seat in planes if it's not stuffed full. It also fits into the back of a tuk-tuk really easily because it has a slim profile. That is so important in Sri Lanka is to pack a small bag. If you're not taking tuk-tuks, you're taking public buses or public trains. The bigger your bag, you're just in the way of everyone. The locals are so nice here, but I still wouldn't want to annoy them with a giant 70 liter backpack. So really only bring the essentials to Sri Lanka and you're gonna be so happy because it's so much to do here. You're on the go constantly. This bag has space for a laptop. I have my laptop with me. If I was coming here on its own destination and not as a digital nomad, I would not be bringing my laptop. So don't bring it if you don't need it. Let's start with this front pocket. I have a little travel journal and a pen. In this tall pocket in the front, I rolled up a sun hat. You should definitely get something to protect yourself from the sun, whether it's a baseball cap or some kind of big urban sombrero. Definitely need something though. An external battery pack. This one is from Mogix. It holds up to two charges for an iPhone. This battery holds on to a charge for months. All these long days on a tuk-tuk or a scooter and navigating, you're gonna be draining your phone battery. So definitely bringing a battery pack is vital and the cords to charge your phone. <laughs> headphones, these are some Bluetooth headphones as well as regular plug-in headphones because I don't love Bluetooth ones personally. Sunscreen, all good zinc sunscreen. Favorite sunscreen ever. I talk about this a lot more in my video. Link is above. It's about my essential gear for Asia, but definitely a good zinc sunscreen for your face. Get some kind of bug spray, mosquito repellent. I found this one in Kuala Lumpur. It's called Mossy Guard. I'll try to find something like this online. Put a link below. Lots of mosquitoes here. If you are like me, the mosquitoes love you. Pick up a great natural repellent before you get here as well as some really good sunscreen. This is a Banana Boat Simply Protect Kit sunscreen, which is a little bit cheaper than an adult sunscreen, but it's just as good. And this one is paraben free and it doesn't contain any of the reef destroying products. So it's a win, win, win. Moving on to my main pocket here. This backpack opens up like a suitcase so I can lay it flat. Let's start with my clothes. I have a packing cube. This is all of the clothes plus what I'm wearing that I have in Sri Lanka. 
These are the things I've been wearing all the time. That's all you really need is just a little bit. In my packing queue, I have a long skirt. This goes down to my knees. Really useful for temples and for those hot days. Sri Lanka is a fairly conservative country. So unless you're down by the beach, I do suggest covering up. Definitely covering up to your knees is a little bit more respectful for the local cultures in the Northern areas. Long sleeve linen shirt. This is great for sun protection, covering up for those temples. And in case it's windy on the beach, I have this one tank top with me that's more of a fashion tank top. It's a cotton blend. And the only other shirt I have that's cotton is my flamingo. Button up shirts, I like fun beach shirts. All of my other shirts are merino wool because they are lightweight, they dry super fast, and they resist odors, which means even though I'm super smelly and I'm not really wearing a lot of deodorant here, my shirts don't smell horrible. So I have one, two, three merino wool t-shirts of varying weight. I have two from Icebreaker and one from Unbound Merino. I also have one Icebreaker tank top, which is also merino wool. And I use this for layering when it was chilly in the highlands, as well as some of the hiking that we've been doing. I have two pairs of shorts, the ones that I am wearing, which are from Uniqlo. I have a pair of longer shorts that I bought in Malaysia. And I suggest picking up a pair of local long pants or shorts. These cover my knees and they look like a skirt and I love them so much and they're so ugly but so great. So I'm shameless. I just want to be comfortable and these shorts are appropriate to wear to temples. One pair of long pants, preferably something that's comfortable for hiking or long days on the moped or in your tuk-tuk or on a train. These are the Patagonia Studio Hiker Pants. I have been wearing these non-stop on our trip. They're elastic, they have pockets, and the back pocket with the zipper is big enough to fit my phone. These pants are amazing when we were staying in Ella and it was a little rainy and a little chilly and I really needed something to just keep me a little warmer. Pants, you gotta have some pants, especially if you're gonna hike Adam's Peak. You really want to be wearing pants because it's a religious place. Wearing shorts is incredibly disrespectful to the local culture. You're also going to be hiking in the middle of the night, so wear some pants. I have two sports bras. I have one in black and I have the tan nude one that I'm wearing right now. This one is from Patagonia and the other one is from Nike. Just get comfortable sports bras. All the roads are bumpy. It's gonna hurt. I have a little tank top from Uniqlo Arizona that I used to sleep in. It's nice to have a little bit of coverage, but something that's also really cool and lightweight since not everywhere has air conditioning. I bring one pair of socks. These are merino wool for hiking. Maybe two if you plan to do a lot of hiking. I just brought my low top ones. You can bring a little higher ones, but it's not really cold if you're moving around. Honestly, just the low top ones are great. These ones are from Smart Wool. I have some really nice ones from Darn Tough as well that I like. Good pair of merino wool socks are worth their weight in gold when you want a little bit of slippers too in a cold homestay up in the highlands. Ex officio underwear. What would I do without these? They resist odors and stains. They dry instantly. I wash these all the time. I have three of these. I also have just a couple of cotton thong underwear that I like to mix up with my other pair. I have about six pairs of underwear on my trip total. Any more is definitely overkill since I wash them pretty frequently. A buff. You can use as a headband. Keeping your hair out of your face in the wind is a hat. Sweat wipe. Buff does everything. I use this every night to pull my hair back when I wash my face. And on the tuk-tuk when it was so windy, literally just kind of be like, ah, I can't deal with my hair. And when we were hiking and it was really hot, I dipped this into the waterfall. And then I had a nice cool buff around my neck. So those are all the clothes that fit in my packing cube. The only other item I have is a jacket. This puffy jacket is the only thing that doesn't fit in my packing cube. I bought this in Vietnam and I do wish I had brought my actual puffy jacket with me because it would pack smaller than this knockoff. In the Highlands, this jacket was so great. I needed it so badly because I get so cold, but also I'm freezing on airplanes, so one jacket is enough. Between my long sleeve linen shirt and this jacket, those are all the layers that I need. 
if you're only coming to Sri Lanka to stay in the south and to surf and be on the beach, don't bring a jacket like this. But if you are planning to go to Ella, Nuara Elia, Candy, any of that region, definitely bring yourself a jacket, especially because you're going to do really early morning hiking. And at Adam's Peak, if you're up at the top and you're waiting for the sun to rise, you're gonna be cold and wish you had a jacket. A sarong, really important to cover up from the beach, to use as a towel, as well as you have a wrap for temples in case you need to cover your knees. I like this sarong as a Turkish towel, so it's a cotton bamboo blend, so it dries really quickly and stays really soft. I also have a laundry bag. It's just a mesh bag to keep my dirty clothes separate so I know when a couple things end up in this bag, it's time to wash things by hand. In a plastic bag, I keep my swimsuit and my rash guard. Rash guard because I'm here to surf, swimsuit because I'm here to do everything in the water. <laughs> this is a one-piece swimsuit. It stays on my body a little bit better. I kind of wish I had two action swimsuits, things that don't fall off when you jump into lakes and rivers and pools and ocean when you're surfing. But one is probably enough since most of the time up in the highlands, we weren't swimming. I have two pairs of shoes. I have my Z Trail sandals. I have a whole video on why I love these sandals so much. Check it out. These are amazing for every single thing I do with sandals, which is pretty much everything. When you're in temples, it's customary to take off your shoes. You will be barefoot anyways. You're gonna be barefoot most of the time at the beach and every time you arrive into a homestay or some restaurants even, you're gonna take your shoes off. So something that is slip on is a little more convenient, but these to me are worth their weight in gold for how squishy and comfortable they are. I have one pair of walking shoes, hiking shoes. These are my Vivo barefoot shoes. I like having a pair of sneakers for hiking for those colder nights that I want to cover up as well as just a little mosquito protection sometimes. These are my sneaker of choice. They are really small, lightweight, easily fit in my bag. I also carry them in a shoe bag so that way they don't get the rest of my backpack dirty and filthy with stuff. Sri Lanka is a special place for electricity. There are three different types of electrical plugs you will find here. Most of the time the UK plug is fine. About half the time you actually need a special plug for Sri Lanka that only applies to Sri Lanka and some African countries. We bought this here, really easy to find. It's a special one, it's got a thick one and two small plugs. A packable day pack, great for those hikes you're gonna do. Great to bring to the beach, throw your stuff in there. When you're surfing, tuck everything away. Leave it safely on the table with the surf guys. Definitely need something for carrying water and a couple layers if you need them. Especially for temple, you need the layers to cover your shoulders and your knees. This one is from Matador. We also have one from Tortuga that we like as well. As long as you have some kind of backpack that is tiny and packs up to nothing and is lightweight, you're good to go. I do have a little clutch purse with me. This is from Muji. I enjoy having something for when we're in the cities. I could just use my fanny pack, but the fanny pack tends to get a little sweaty. So I like having a little purse for when we're in Welagama and we're going to some a little bit more hip places to have a cocktail. It's nice to have a purse and feel a little more upscale and less backpackery. I always bring spare Ziploc bags. You never know when you buy a box of cookies and you want to keep a few more or when your homestay hosts make you dessert and give it to you and you want to save some for the next day. An eye mask because there's always going to be a place where the light is just so bright, such as the air conditioner is just blaring a blue light in your face or the street light is coming in. But you definitely wanna bring an eye mask so that you make sure you get some good beauty sleep. Water bottle with a filter so you can minimize your use of plastic bottles. This one is Be Free by Katahdin. You can fill it up from the tap and drink it straight from this bottle and it makes the water safe and pretty good tasting. Not great, but good enough. Last thing is toiletries and first aid. In my toiletry kit, I just have a little bag because it's small, it's easy, prevents me from overpacking. It's so hot and sweaty in Sri Lanka, I do not need makeup at all 
Everything fits into this small container. My most important thing is Dr. Bronner's soap. I use this for laundry, for my body, if the homestays don't have any soap. But this little bar has gone around the world with me. I talk about it more in the gear packing video of most important things. This soap is awesome. Menstrual cup of your choice. I like a tinted face sunscreen. This one is from Badger. It is a zinc sunscreen and it is SPF 25. It's really nice to not wash me out since it's tinted. A bar of soap for my face. This is from Ethique. I really like having bar soap and bar moisturizer also from Ethique. They won't get all over your bag and they stay small and compact. They last a long time. I took the original bars and I put them into these containers. This this is the face soap. I just bought this little container from Muji for the soap, as well as this is just a little Tupperware container that I have for moisturizer. I use a deodorant from Little Seed Farm that's an activated charcoal, and I just took it out of the glass jar and I put some into this all good sunscreen container. It works great and I have enough to use and smear on my armpits when I need to use some deodorant, such as going to a restaurant at night. But you just need a little bit and so this container has lasted me a really long time. Comb and a hairbrush, razor, toothbrush, nail clippers, and tweezers. Toothpaste. I like this tooth powder from Uncle Harry's Natural. Tooth powder is not a liquid in your carry-on bag, so yay! This is my first aid kit, little tiny container. A few important things such as hydrocortisone for bug bites, aspirin and Advil that I put into this little container here, a miniature sewing kit because you never know when you're gonna lose a button or need to repair your swimsuit or your backpack or just a hole in your shirt. Uh, some antibiotics just in case we get sick. I did use these when we were in Indonesia. I haven't had any issues yet in Sri Lanka, but it's nice to have something in case you do have big problems. Anti-diarrheals such as loperamide or Imodium. I have a couple rehydration salts as well as a little cold and flu medicine. Haven't needed to use these, but it's good to have something just in case. A couple band-aids, Neosporin or some kind of gel that is for pain relief and antibiotic. You never know when you're gonna step on a sea urchin in the water like Sean did. So that's everything that I would recommend bringing to Sri Lanka. Keep it light, keep it lean, keep yourself mobile. If you have questions or comments, drop them below. We love Sri Lanka, it's been one of our favorite places to come. So I'm happy to answer any questions about this beautiful country. Thank you for watching.